Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Well what I've got for you today is a couple of processor boards I bought on eBay last week. Um, these were out of an IBM Power 4 server. Uh, they're around 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old. Um, they, they wouldn't have been used in a traditional sort of server like what I've got down here. They would have been used in a sort of mainframe um, server which would have cost around half a million pounds, something like that. Um, the reason I bought these is simply because they were ridiculously cheap. Um, I'll show you the auction page here. Um, I won them for £3.20 and they came with free delivery. So, to be honest with you, I think the delivery cost the guy more than, uh, more than what I paid for them. So, uh, an out-and-out -out bargain nonetheless. Now, um, there's two of them, as I said. Now, this is, um, this is, they're both identical, but what I've done is I've taken um, all the heat sinks off the one underneath. So I'll just let you have a look um, at the processor card itself. Now, these would have both been in the same machine, I'm guessing, because uh, the, these servers would have had upwards of eight or 16, possibly even 32 processors, depending on the configuration. Um, uh, this also, caters for the memory as well so you would have plugged all the memory modules into here. Now uh, these look like PC133 or DDR slots but they're not. Um, they're some sort of uh, custom IBM memory which I haven't seen before. Uh, I can't say that I'm familiar with um, much of this sort of memory um, because it is a lot longer than PC133. Um, let me see if I can find a bit. Well put it this way here's a piece of um, DDR2 which I um, upgraded out my server and you'll see it's um, the slot itself is a little bit longer than a normal DDR so these are possibly going to be some sort of uh, ECC memory um, specifically for use in these type of servers. Now uh, I'll let you see what's on the other board. I say these are both identical all I've done is I've just moved the heat sinks off of them on this second one. Now as you can see we've got the main processor here um, which is an IBM Power 4 um, 1.4 gigahertz. Now I've typed in a part number and I can't find any information about it. Um, neither can I find any information about the um, about this chip here uh, or the Hitachi or, or any of the memory um, controller chips. So unfortunately IBM are always very secretive about their part numbers especially in um, this sort of equipment. Um, the only thing I could find on Google with this part number was uh, was a supplier in China which are selling them. So there's no data sheets, there's no information, there's no there's no, no information I could find about them, unfortunately. But uh, what I do like about them is that instead of just being a standard um, fibre board, um, like a sort of Pentium 3 chip or something like that, they're actually uh, based on a ceramic um, a ceramic base which is which is quite interesting. Um, you look at the huge number of pins underneath, let me just flip this over I'll let you see the huge number of pins on the bottom of this. Um, there's probably in excess of a thousand pins there, possibly more, um, as with the other ceramic chip which is uh, just there, this, this white one here. Now there's also a Hitachi chip which um, I'm not quite sure what it's for because again the part number doesn't show anything on Google. But uh, again, that's that's a sort of uh, that's a ceramic type chip, um, and you can see the huge number of pins underneath it, and the huge density of them. Let me just zoom in there so you can see it. There's there's got to be around again around a thousand pins on this one chip. Um, they're quite densely packed. Now on these smaller chips, these are just uh, these look like just standard BGA chips. Um, these will be for controlling the memory. Um, they're all going to be identical, so I only took the heatsink compound off one of them. Um, but as I said before, none of the part numbers are giving me any, any information whatsoever. So uh, unfortunately, I can't really tell you a lot about this. But um, based on the location, the quantity, and um, the pinout, I'm. I'm absolutely certain these are going to be for um, controlling the memory. Um, we've also got some LEDs on the top here which um, these are possibly going to be for the location or identification of the processor because on the board which I haven't um, removed the chassis from you can see each one has a letter above it so that would correspond with the location of the processor. Um, there's also another LED here which is uh, going to be an alert LED to notify the administrator of any 
um, failed CPU units. So as you can see these are very easy to swap out. They've just got a couple of latches on the side which uh, allow them to be swapped. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I, these are not going to be hot swappable. I'd be very surprised if these are hot swappable um, because they're CPU modules but at least you can replace them relatively quickly um, simply powering the system down, replacing the um, a failed unit, popping in a new one and powering it back up. Maybe a slight firmware update or something like that, but certainly nothing um, nothing extensive. Now if you just have a look at the size of the heatsink on here, it's quite large. Um, I've got the heatsink for it somewhere, uh, if I can find it. Ah oh, yes, here it is. And I quite like the design of this heatsink. Um, I saw this, I've seen this design um, one other place, um, it was on video about a Cray um, supercomputer which was being upgraded and they had the same um, layout um, with the aluminium and the heatsink, um, sorry, aluminium heatsink with the copper pipe through the middle and uh, just running my finger over this, this is completely smooth, there's no, um, there's no gap between the copper and the aluminium and you can see it's been very finely machined um, down to a very precise um, standard so there's there's no um, there's no difference between the copper and the aluminium so this is going to be very good for dissipating heat uh, this is this is a little pad here which had some heatsink compound on it um, to conduct the heat away from the processor and into the heatsink we've got a few other um, heatsinks which are on these these other chips here which I've got over here I've sort of put them into this little block to keep them safe. Um, we've also got another heat sink here. Now this is just a standard aluminium heat sink um, which went on to, uh, which one would it be? Yeah, it'd be this one here. This white ceramic chip here. So um, it's, it's I, I don't think this chip would have given out very much heat compared to the CPU because it's only a very basic passive aluminium heat sink. There's no copper in it whatsoever. And um, I'm absolutely certain this is aluminium and not a herb. A, a copper heatsink because of the weight of it, it feels, feels very very light. Uh, the final heatsink was uh, this one here. Now again I think this is aluminium again um, but it's been spray painted black. This went onto the Hitachi chip here. Now I mean if anyone's got any information on these chips or have um, used these systems before or know anything about them I'd really like to find out what these, what these are for because these have obviously been um, designed to a very high standard and um, I must say they're very very well designed and the rest of the board just looking at the rest of the board you can tell that the um, quality of build is outstanding um, the brands they've used on the capacitors for instance um, you look at the socket they've used for the CPU this is a custom built socket uh, made by what company is it? Uh, Teradyne and then we've got another socket over here which is made by Teradyne which is going to be for the memory as you can see there's, there's quite a lot of pins there there's what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rows of pins there so uh, yeah so um, it's, it's a very nice bit of kit really um, I'll just, sorry, one other thing I'll just mention uh, is these power connectors on the bottom um, it looks like one solid strip but it's not uh, they've been separated so as you can see you've got uh, let me just move this light for a moment yeah, as you can see you've got separate strips here, uh, this one is 1.2 volt, uh, this one here, this one is 1.8 volt, this one's 2.5 volts, and then this one on the back, um, which again is separated by this uh, plastic insulating barrier, that is just um, one single ground connection. So um, although it might be very low voltage, I'm thinking these are going to be quite high current um, because of the power of the um, processor. I'm not even going to guess what, what type of, uh, what, what sort of uh, current it's going to be pulling, but judging by the type of the connector, it's going to be quite a lot. And uh, I can't imagine these would cost anything less than around £20,000 each when they were new, um, considering the, re the whole server would have cost at least half a million pounds um, when it was new. I can't imagine the main processor being any less than twenty grand. So uh, we've, got, it, we've got about forty grand's worth of processors sitting in front of me, um, which I picked up for £3.20, but unfortunately unless you've got a system which is, which is going to support these, which, which most, well, I don't think anyone's going to have these anymore, um, certainly because they were based on industrial standards they they wouldn't have run um, 
x86 so probably would have run on RISC or something like that so they're not um, traditional PCs or servers you couldn't really do much with them unless you've got a very specific um, specialist application also the power would most likely be three phase so they certainly wouldn't run on a standard residential power supply so unfortunately uh, there's not a lot I could do with these so what I might do is um, I might desolder some of these chips um, because these are very interesting chips um, they're, they're white ceramic and uh, ceramic gold so there's some very interesting bits there so uh, yeah I'll have to do another video on that sometime well thanks for watching and uh, I'll have a few more videos up very soon